What's up guys, GrimxV here. After playing 1.0 for the last month, it's finally time to give you guys the video you've all been patiently waiting for. Today we'll be talking about the new emerging weapon loadouts, changes for infusion combos, uniques, and the overall shift the meta seems to be taking. Before that though, I want to give a special thank you to Relic for becoming my channel's very first supporter. Not long after 1.0, he reached out and informed me that he and a bunch of his buddies were enjoying my content as they transitioned over from New World. After spending some time discussing strategies for his upcoming wipe, he was kind enough to provide me with my very first donation <laughs> you would <laughs> you would <laughs> i also want to give the rest of you a shout out as well as over the last month i've played on a ton of servers and have gotten to meet fight and just enjoy the game alongside some of you i can honestly say these last few weeks have been some of my most enjoyable experiences on the What's game up, and i can't thank you enough for all enjoy. of your kind words and support that spreadsheet that spreadsheet's crazy bro What's up, man? Yo, I saw your videos on YouTube, bro. Keep it up, man. Good shit. Hey, appreciate it, bro. But now that's out of the way, let's dive in. For those of you late to the party, the 1.0 release features some pretty big changes to the PvP scene. The most notable of which being the addition of new weapons, the Whip and Longbow, along with a hotbar slot reduction from 9 down to 8. New players may not see this as a big deal, but high-end PvP revolves around using different weapon abilities depending on the situation you find yourself in. Not having three weapons means that six less options you have in your tool belt. Thankfully, we knew about this a few months prior to release, so players within the community had already boiled it down to pretty much dropping just one of two weapons, which were the Mace or Pistol. People pro mace enjoy the option to curve mace Q around barriers and the fact that its E can be used to inflict a quick end cap and gain space from multiple targets. People pro pistol love its mobile playstyle, high damage mid-range autos, and its insane flexibility when it comes to its E iframe. But how do we incorporate whip and longbow now that 1.0 is out? My thoughts around this are as always subjective, but through my time playing on the beta and my time playing on live servers, the best and smoothest transition for me seems to be a choice between longbow or crossbow for your long range weapon and a choice between the whip or axe for your mid range CC. When I compared the base functionality between the, each of these weapons, I found the playstyle to be roughly the same. For my loadout, I've decided to keep crossbow, replace the axe with the whip, and drop pistols. You might be wondering why crossbow over longbow. Well, I chose crossbow over longbow because I value the E more than the longbow's Q. While the longbow's Q is pretty much the best kiting ability in the game now, I simply value the quick animation from the E on the crossbow more. This is largely due to the crossbow E being able to cancel defensives and dashes when timed correctly. What's more is that when you manage to do this, those abilities actually go on cooldown as well. My decision to go with the whip instead of the axe is because I value the quick CC more in my playstyle. It's not exactly meta, but I've enjoyed the flow of fighting with bone explosions since pre gloom run. The quick animation, and more importantly, the duration of the whip's E, gives me another opportunity to land my bone explosion followed by a spear cue. The problem I've always had with the axe is that the CC timer is too short to get a full cast of bone explosion before my target can move. When it comes to my decision to keep mace and drop pistols, the decision was a bit harder, and is honestly something I'm still kind of debating. I decided to let go of pistols for now because while losing its high damage autos and fast iframe, I still have an option for mid-range autos with the whip, which is arguably even stronger, and I can use the great sword for an E iframe still. With these changes, the feel of how I play hasn't changed much and has actually enhanced what I want to do in combat, like landing my bone explosion more. The only thing I've really had to adjust for is my PvE combo. I used to love chaining Axe E with Mace Q, but I now instead use Scythe E into Mace Q or Spear Q. But that's largely just for a smooth transition from Gloomrot to 1.0. What about when taking things like the new infusion combos, uniques, and meta changes into account? Well, that's where the waters get a bit more murky, so let's stick a pin in the loadout conversation for now. Before we get to what's new, let's go over what's changed. The one impactful change SLS made to these was that they took away all of the consume jewel modifier effects. In terms of infusion combos, this translates to us no longer being able to do things like a weakened infused greatsword Q into Aegisphere, but pretty much all of the old frost combos are still intact. It does not, however, mean that all of the weakened infusion combos are dead. They just now revolve around the new crossbow. The crossbow and the mace are, in my mind, the best two options to consider when thinking of using infusion combos to lock someone down now. I've been playing around with these since beta, and the CC chains you can land now are simply insane. Check this out.
time. I gotta switch this gem up. As you can see, when using these new infusion options properly, you can create some pretty heavy lockdown. While a chill can be cleansed by simply dashing, weakened can, which can often catch people off guard. What's more is that if you alternate between the two, diminishing returns are nearly inconsequential. All of this together with the right weapons and rotation can create the perfect storm. Which brings me to the topic of uniques. Now before we get too deep into this, I want to preface this by saying I don't recommend you set up your bars solely because of what these can do. There's no denying a lot of these are powerful and offer some great utility, but on a fresh server, you've got a long way to go before you'll be able to grind for these, and even then, it's still up to RNG. That said, here's what I think about each of them. The whip is in my mind by far the strongest and most valuable weapon out of the bunch. They've thankfully nerfed the damage versus players down to what I'd consider acceptable, but the real value with this thing comes with the damage it does to a golem. Golems take percent health damage from fire, so having a couple guys in the group attacking one with these will absolutely melt it. Pun intended. The only functional downside when compared to a standard whip is the reduced CC timer on its E. To me, the X stands closely behind the whip as one of the strongest uniques in the game, but the use for it compared to the standard version is a bit different. You can still use the Q to set up quick damage bursts with a melee build, but the real value is its E. The goal for the standard version is to land the end cap so you can then follow up with something high damage like say a spear Q. But with the unique version, the E is the damage so things are a bit different. The goal for these is landing these without your opponent having a defensive, so you want to try to either bait those out or time the ability for when they're not expecting it to get all the value. I play Spear 3rd because while I don't particularly care for all the modifiers the weapon rolls, the E is insane. Setting the Spider-Man RP aside, the E is fast and guarantees a Q if it lands. Out of all the weapons on the list, this is the one I suggest new players aim for first. I've actually gotten outright cooked versus less experienced players simply because they were patient and used this at the right moments. The Mace is one that's still being debated heavily amongst the community, but I personally like it a lot. To me, the real value from this actually comes from its E and not its Q. While the Q is juicy, you really shouldn't be hunting for this from the start. It's something you want to use when the opportunity arises, but going for it out the gate is just going to get you cooked. The one combo I'd recommend going for to land this though is pairing it with Villa Frost so you can do the E and then dash auto into Q. Preferably you run this with Rogue Blood and the Shadow Set for the increased crit chance as well. The unique crossbow is my favorite by far. It's lower on the list because it falls short from a pure damage standpoint, but the utility it provides is easily number one. In my mind, this thing is now the strongest supplementary tool for offensive spells in the game. You can set this up with almost any infusion weapon, but here are my favorites in each range. From what I've tested, the unique longbow might possibly be the strongest PvE weapon in the game. The pierce on its Q will shred a pack all while providing quick focus stacks so you can use its high damage E on the tankier mobs. For PvP, I can't find many downsides to it outside of the fact that this unique has no infusions on it. That said, if you plan on using a longbow, you'll likely want to farm for this at some point. 
The Static Slashes is another pretty controversial weapon. I've seen some players swear that it's OP and others say that it's easily abused. My stance on this is that both camps are right. Currently the weapon does feel extremely strong and in fact if you land all three dashes its damage is even comparable to that of a Static Spear Q. However, I believe landing all three is only possible because players just aren't used to it yet. Some players like myself have built up as much as two years worth of muscle memory and timing around interactions with the standard slasher, so adjusting to the third dash will take time. Once that adjustment period is over though, I think that people will find that this can be easily abused. However, it'll still have some impact in open world just due to the RNG aspect that open world presents. The greatsword seems pretty good on paper and the additional damage it provides with its Q to ignited targets can actually hit pretty hard. However, I think this weapon is better served in PvE. I suppose people running void could probably make this work and even shine, but outside of that build, I think you get more value out of having a greatsword with a different infusion. For a static greatsword, my infusion pick for damage would be static to empower the free auto attack at the end of its Q, and for CC combos, both frost and weaken will work when chained with the mace or crossbow respectively. The reaper is probably my favorite unique for PvE, but it still leaves something to be desired for PvP. The Q consume can be good for healing, but the likelihood of you pulling this off more than once in a fight is pretty low. Not to mention, using your Q in this way leaves you with a pretty huge disadvantage. When it comes to its E, the condemned being applied is actually pretty good. The old merciless charge EQ combo will hit a bit harder with this as well, but personally I find that it's all just a bit too niche to consider running. When it comes to the sword, this is another weapon that I've found pretty good for PvE, but lacking in PvP. The extended Q can be fun for mobs, but in PvP, it falls short when comparing the damage to a static sword Q. The bonus damage on the E is somewhat nice, but isn't really worth it. There's really no sugarcoating this one. This weapon is just flat out bad for PvP. It should not be used. The trade-off with losing the end cap on the Slasher E is already pretty bad, but to add insult to injury, the Vampiric Curse is weak and can even be iframe just like the final pop of a Heart Strike. I think this is probably the only unique I consider in desperate need of a buff or rework. And that brings us back to where we left off in our initial topic. What loadouts are high skill players currently using at endgame? Well, aside from mine, here's the one I've seen gain the most traction. For conversation purposes, we'll call mine loadout A and the other option loadout B. The differences between these two come down to your preference for a response to a handful of interactions, which is difficult to explain, but I'll do my best to highlight both options. As always, if something isn't clear, feel free to drop a comment below or broach the subject on the V Arena Discord. To start, let's talk about contrasting weapons in each loadout. For loadout A, that's Mace, Reaper, and Crossbow. Loadout A uses the Mace E for quick end caps, aka stuns, that can be used offensively or defensively with Frost to expand into other options. The downside with this is that in order for it to give value, the enemy has to be relatively close to start the chain. It's also fairly easy to miss the timing for its E due to the increased movement speed players have now. Reaper in this setup is most commonly used just for its Q. It can be used as a defensive option to cancel an enemy ability when they're in close range or offensively for quick damage when you need to remain highly mobile. Outside of the crossbow's auto attacks, its E is used for a variety of situations. Offensively, this can be chained after an infusion Q for further damage with the spell or ultimate, while defensively, it acts as a quick interrupt at all ranges. The Q's value isn't that relevant in a 1v1, but it shines in teamfights due to it being the only ranged weapon ability in the game that won't trigger a defensive spell. In place of those for loadout B, we have Axe, Pistol, and Longbow. Loadout B primarily uses the Axe E offensively for its high burst damage. The goal behind this is to land it when the enemy is unaware or has no defensive cooldowns to counter. The Q can be used defensively as a short range interrupt or offensively to start a high damage auto attack chain. Just be mindful that you'll need to work some attack speed into your build if you plan to use it for the latter. For the pistols, outside of the autos, it's primarily used defensively for its E iframe to dodge an important or high damage ability from your opponent. Now, when explaining the shift from Gloomrot to 1.0, I know I initially drew a correlation of choice between this and the mace, but in this loadout, you should also consider it as a replacement for the situations you'd normally use a defensive Reaper Q or Crossbow E. This is also usually a better option than your Greatsword E, just due to it being less punishable. Lastly, when it comes to the longbow, there's some nuance with its auto attacks that can actually throw off a player's sidestep timing. However, the real gem with this weapon is its Q. The longbow Q is 
is now the best single kiting ability in the game and even has insane value in 1vx due to it hitting targets within a cone. The E does great damage as well, but for this loadout, you'll almost always want to use an Axie for damage instead. Now, if I lost you while explaining all that, the TLDR is that loadout A has less damage but more CC and setup options, while loadout B has less setup and higher damage. Right now, loadout B is the most common pick amongst players because we already have so many strong defensive spell options. What's more is that because of how easy it is to get what I'd call an excessive level of movement speed, you can easily work yourself into or out of your desired range, making the need for CC not as relevant. All that said, whether you like option A, B, or even what I didn't cover today, don't forget to cater your build to what feels right to you. I've been playing around with variations of option A for a while and have recently been enjoying this setup. Lastly, let's get into the current meta. You might have already pieced it together from the last section, but the name of the game right now is Movement Speed Supplemented with Sustain. There's a number of ways you can achieve this, but the most common is to run Rogue Blood with the Shadow Set to fulfill the Movement Speed aspect, and then some variation of Double Defensive spells for your Sustain. To be clear, when I refer to Double Defensive here, I don't just mean Barriers and Counters either. Lightning Curtain, Aegis, and even the Steroids, Power Surge, and Blood Rage can be counted amongst these as well. Your exact selection and preferred amulet choice are up to preference, but here's the most common picks. And that's gonna be it for today's video guys. This was a long one, but if you learned from or found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything and honestly helps the channel out a bunch. As always, thank you so much for watching. This is Grim XV, signing off.